Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Josh Coker here, aka Josh Miss Prime, and we're back with section two of part four of the Minotaur mini series. And I'm trying to keep these videos short and sweet, one, so that they upload quickly, and two, so that they're concise and to the point you can, when you search for these ideas, it's very easy to find like what you're looking for. So let's get right back into it. We were talking about how um, the, the Minotaur is found in a particular stage of the journey. It's usually around the midpoint, which means so the hero, the hero has already left their normal world during the separation or departure act. And now they're in the second act of the story, which is the initiation act. And this initiation act has two sections to it. The first section is what is generally known as the road of trials. This is where the hero is running away from danger. They're 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 falling. They're tripping over. Uh, they're not. They're just. They can't get any traction. They're 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 not very um, successful in their attempts. And it would be a good time to show them fa uh, fail and and lose by using their old flawed mindset. And this is something that I talk about in my books in great detail that when you're setting up your hero, the main thing is you want to set them up with an individual thematic flaw that is reflective of the societal flaw. And when you do this correctly, it will really resonate with the readers and it's going to tie in directly with this Minotaur archetype that he's going to have to face. Um, so, in the, in the, like I was saying, in the first section of the initiation act, the hero is, has, faces all these trials, tests, obstacles, and what you should think of those is it's kind of like um, pop quizzes that the hero has to face um, for, you know, a math exam that he's been, he's been going to school for for the last few weeks. And every week there's a pop quiz, pop quiz, pop quiz, and now at the end of the month, now he has to face the, face the, the, the test, the midterm test, to see how much he's retained. Well, that's, that's what happens. At the end of the Road of Trials, the hero will then um, head towards or come in contact with the, the divine figure, which is classically known as the goddess figure. And this goddess figure, or this divine figure, is going to send him, one of the major functions of that archetype is to send the hero on an impossible task that will force him to come into, con or her, force them to come in or into contact with the Minotaur archetype. And I'll give you guys some examples in a, in a few moments, but um, this, the reason that this is happening is because the hero knows that they have to do something to help restore society. That's part of their quest. But in order to achieve that goal, they have to first complete this impossible task to obtain the boon, to obtain some new supernatural power or some newfound ability. Dunkin' Donuts is life. So, with that being said, um, once the hero accepts that call for the new task, and they, they might they might have some issues with it, and they might complain, and they might like say, hey, I don't want to go. Um, just think about when Frodo has that conversation with Galadriel uh, about you know he like tries to give her the give her the ring, and he's like, I don't want anything to do with this, man. I'm I'm done. And she's like, she. First of all, she passes the test, and then she's like, no, this is this task is set for you, Frodo Baggins. And um, so it's very similar to that. Like, the hero may not want to go, but he ha they have to. And then that is going to propel them into the next part of the journey. And this is very specific, because there's two things going on here. There's the outer journey and the inner journey, and they're both happening in tandem. On the inner journey, it's a descent into darkness. Um, the, the hero is going to come to face, come face to face with their internal flaws and all the problems that they have. And they're going to, 
in the outer journey, they're going to encounter obstacles and creatures and monsters and eventually the Minotaur, which are all symbolic of that critical flaw that they have, that psychological flaw that's preventing them from reaching their fullest potential. That is reflective of the societal flaw that's affecting everybody in the society. Okay, everything, it's all tied together. So as they go into that descent on, on the outer journey, they're going to more and more of a darker place, a lower place. But as they're going down, down, down into this dark dungeon, labyrinthian type of place, the conflict is ramp ramping up and ratcheting up and up and up until you hit this tent pole conflict, which we call the crisis point, the midpoint, or the crucible. And this is where the hero has to really it's, it's the midterm test. He has to prove that he's learned everything thus far. So all his failures have led him to this point where he now is facing the impossible task and must succeed or else pretty much death is on the line. And, um, and so this, uh, when I, when I spoke earlier, I kind of misspoke. So let me just clarify on the inner journey they're heading towards the innermost cave. Why is it called the innermost cave? It's because it's the innermost sub compartment of the subconscious where the hero is gonna find within himself the truth and use the truth that will set him free from his flaw. Or he'll die, he'll fail and die trying. That is, that is the, and the reason why it's called the innermost cave is because as I said before, in the outer journey, there's this descent into darkness. And it's usually depicted by the underworld, by a dungeon-like place, by a dreadful swampy place. It's always something dark and gruesome. And, and then when he gets there, he has to face the Minotaur archetype. Or that's where the Minotaur archetype would appear, is in this section. It could be some other monster archetype, like a dragon or a demon. And, and a, or a monster, and we've, we'll discuss those in other videos, but for the Minotaur, this is where the Minotaur shows up. It's very important. Now, I'm going to give you some examples so you can kind of see uh, what's going on here. In Clash of the Titans, Perseus goes and visit him and his team visit the three hags, and these witches, they use an eye that has like true sight to see the, the divine fates. And, and they can see what his destiny is. And they tell him that basically he has to, he ha in order to save the society, he will have to defeat Medusa and cut off her head in order to, to then save the society from the Kraken. And so that right there is an impossible task because Medusa is one of the most powerful beings. Nobody's ever defeated her. Uh, nobody's ever come back from her lair. She turns men into stone. So, and then it's also a descent into the innermost cave because Medusa is, as a Gorgon, is very similar to the Minotaur archetype in the sense that she is reflective of a societal flaw. And all of these monsters that they go to, to interact with and they end, they end up facing, they're always some gruesome thing because they represent the gruesomeness and the nastiness and, and the ferocity and power of the world that we sometimes are blinded by because we live in this world of luxury in a sense. And so um, they're representative of that notion that the world is, is a, a terrible place to be in some sense and it's dangerous and there are powerful monsters that are out there that are waiting to eat you. And moreover, these are reflective of human flaws. So that's why you see a Gorgon with snake head or a Minotaur with a bull's face or, or some other monster with some animalistic, anamorphic uh, characteristics. Those are reflective or representative of this inner societal flaw that's messed things up. And if you recall in part one, when I gave you the history and the prototypical myth of the Minotaur, we talked about King Minos and his sins that, that 
developed into the minute, you know, led into the Minotaur and the Labyrinth. And so let me let me pause right there. We're already at 10 minutes, and I'm trying to keep this short. Um, the Minotaur is almost always found in the Labyrinth. So as we were discussing before, during this stage, the hero is going into a descent into darkness, going into the innermost cave. If your if your character, if your archetype that they're facing is a minotaur archetype, then it's going to make sense for it to be in some labyrinthian type of area where the hero gets lost, where the hero is maybe tempted by, by things or there are illusions involved and it's it would be hard for the hero to find their way back. And then um, maybe the team gets split up. This is also a very common place in stories with the Minotaur and then the team has to then um, separate and fight either against the Minotaur themselves. Usually what happens is the hero is the one that faced the Minotaur, but the team faces like the illusions and the like the minor beasts and creatures. Then um, then they'll they'll recon they'll reconvene. They'll be able to find each other after. Um, so so this place is again dark dungeon like minotaurs like this because this is how they capture their prey um, they like the enclosed places because then the, the they can't run which gives the minotaur an advantage with the, with its large prowess and ability to charge and things things of this nature so um, so keep that in mind right when you're storytelling and then usually in order to defeat the actually we'll we'll save that for the next half so now, now we're going to go into section three of this uh, of this minotaur miniseries uh part four uh and we'll discuss how you did how a hero defeats the minotaur and what is that sim symbol what is that symbolism and imagery and things like that okay i'll catch you guys in the next video